Hi there and welcome to another video of gtmtraining.com. Today with a little update on the new functionality within Google Tag Manager, which are folders and the syntax highlighting. And these little videos are as always brought to you by gtmtraining.com. And I'm starting a new series of live workshops at gtmtraining.com slash workshops, where you'll be able to ask me live questions and I'll show you how you can solve those live on air. So head over to gtmtraining.com slash workshops to sign up for one of these. So here we are back with our Google Tag Manager account. And if you have worked with Google Tag Manager a lot and have a bigger implementation, then it can get quite cluttered when you look into your tags or your triggers or variables. And this morning when I woke up, there was a pleasant surprise because the Google Tag Manager team has taken care of this problem by introducing folders. Now, as you might expect, folders are basically just another category where you can input your tags in. And I've made up some categories here. You cannot only put your tags in categories, but also your variables and your triggers and so on. And I've made up some categories or some folders for my purposes here. I do conversion tracking, I do event tracking, I do Google Analytics and remarketing. And this really is a great feature to keep me sane and get a quick overview of which tags I have implemented in which category if I want to find something fast. Now, frankly, those are not many tags here. I have worked on accounts with several hundred tags where this really makes a lot of sense. Now, the cool thing is that you not only can put tags into a folder, but also variables and triggers. So you can put them into one place where you can find the connection between those. Unfortunately, it is not possible right now to put one tag into several folders. So you need to decide in which folder you want to have them, which is a little bit cumbersome if you have a trigger, for example, the old pages trigger, which not only connects to Google Analytics or the event tracking, um, but also to other categories here. But maybe that will be solved in some capacity too in the future. The other point I wanted to mention is in the tag menu, you now have the capability of sorting by folders and that keeps your all your Google Analytics codes in one group here and you have a quick overview of what happened with the Google Analytics tags, for example. Now let's look how you can actually put something into a folder. The first capability would be if you click on a tag, you have now a little field up here where you can put your tag trigger or variable into the folder that you already created or create a new one. The same capability is basically available here under the folders menu where you can click, for example, on these unfiltered items and move them into a folder that you already created or create a new one from the selected items. So really easy to move and sort your tag trigger variables into the right place. Another feature that is new and which I just wanted to mention is the syntax highlighting. So if you have any kind of HTML, custom HTML tag, you now will notice that the little editor where you input your code has changed and you have all the capabilities of a syntax highlighter. So you have the number of the lines, which makes it easy to see where your error is at. And also it highlights common bits of code within JavaScript. So you'll be able to recognize your strings and numbers and booleans really easily. So really just another feature to make our life when working with Google Tag Manager easier. And that's already it with this little update on Google Tag Manager. If you want to be kept up to date, please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Otherwise, you can still check out our live workshops at gtmtraining.com slash workshops and find also more videos at gtmtraining.com. I'm Julian. Till next time. 
So now let's get started with scroll tracking within GTM. And in order to, and what we'll do in this little tutorial is implement a custom HTML tag, which will basically act as our event listener in Google Tag Manager. And when somebody's, but now let's get started talking about bounce rate. So the bounce rate is often seen as this metric to evaluate landing pages. So does the traffic that hits my page actually stick around or leave the page? There's actually a little bit of a problem here with the bounce rate because the way that is defined in Google Analytics. Let's have a look. So bounce in.